Greetings and greetings. Once again, welcome to the word of the day. It is my happy privilege once again to be Mike's side and to have you camera side. I appreciate you all so very much. As you are coming in, please like that is a thumbs up or um, dislike a thumbs down to help us to uh, really understand how many people are tracking with us. If they're if you're resonating with us or not, if this message is reaching you or touching you in any way that is uh, measurable or worthy of your time, we appreciate you so very, very, very much. And as you're coming in, uh, please do three things. Number one, if you will give us a thumbs up or uh, use some emoji, that way this is pushing the needle forward and people will know that we are here. Number two, if you will, um, type in the fact that you are here after you use the emoji, uh, then type in whether or not you're sharing and that you're sharing the message and that always helps push the needle forward. And then thirdly, of course, uh, type in the subject of our discussion today, which is lowercase g-o-d-s um, colon something in hand, something in hand. And I'm going to show you today, hopefully by the help of the Lord, that if we understand that we're in the God class, you cannot be in that classification. It is illegal for you to be empty handed for the rest of your life or just to have something natural, your natural daily bread, your natural provisions. I'm going to show you that uh, through the scriptures, that if we are to understand that we are in God's classification, being lowercase G-O-D-S, it is illegal by the blood of Jesus for you not to have supernatural provisions uh, operating in your life on a regular and consistent basis. I'm going to go far out there and say on a daily basis. It was Jesus who said that we should pray after this manner. St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that is the planet earth as well as your personal earth suit. We have this earth suit. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Second Corinthians chapter four, I believe you can start at about verse seven, so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So uh, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our, here it is, daily bread. Someone should type that in the comment section, daily bread. And so also type in the comment section 24, that is the number two, four, numbers two, four, letter N for the word N, 24. We are believing God. We're cultivating our mindsets to understand, resetting ourselves to understand there's nothing in your life that God cannot remedy within 24 hours. As a matter of fact, the work has already been done. The question becomes now the quality of your belief system. Uh, Jesus would ask people um, prior to seeing the manifestation of his power, do you believe? St. Matthew chapter 9, two blind men come to Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus asked of them, what do you want? What is it that you desire? Lord, that we might receive our sight. To them, Jesus asked this question, one question and one question only. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said, Lord, we believe. He said, according to your faith. And they came seeing. Um, that's blindness. That's the same thing as any kind of healing. The work has already been done or accomplished through the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. And God already finished it, anticipated your need before the earth was ever formed. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Uh, our first bell sheep, the first person who uh, logged in is Carolyn Banks. Good afternoon, Carolyn. Tanya M is there. Happy Tuesday back. Uh, Carolyn Banks is the second bell sheep. She's the first to type in that she's liked and shared. Michael Robbins, Michael Holmes, bless you, sir. Thank you for being there. Uh, see who else we have. Daryl Terry, thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, see, yes, Carolyn Banks is the third bell sheep. She has the bell uh, attached to her neck because she's the first to type in our subject for discussion. If you would do me a kind favor, type it in. God's lowercase g o d s colon, that's the two periods stacked to top each other, something in hand. Beverly Thompson is with us. Good afternoon. Carolyn Banks has typed it in, 24 in 24. Sandra Harris is with us. Bless you. Bless you, Tracy Campbell. Please give your family my best, particularly your mother. Uh, Tangie Wilson, thank you. Linda Sanders, thank you for being there. Therese, my main man, is there. Thank you, sir. Uh, bless you. Uh, Tamara Alexander is there. Thank you. Bless you. 
uh, for coming in. E. Hale is with us. Bless you. Sam Cunningham, bless you. Sending prayers out to you for God's best to manifest in your physical body and in every way, every echelon of your life. Minnie Lee, bless you. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Felicia Bruce, bless you. And thank you for being there. Bridget Silas, Daily Bread. I'm just typing in there. There we are. Uh, the Silas sisters, I grew up with the, that family in Jacksonville, Florida. Wonderful young women. I call them that because they're a beautiful family. Theresa Thomas is there. Hello, back to you. Thank you for coming in. Gina Coleman Deed, bless you. And um, please pass on my best to your husband as well. Pray everything is progressing well with you. My main man, Dennis Eccles, is there. Bless you, sir. Uh, that's right, 24 and 24. Something should be happening in your life daily, supernaturally from God. Tamika Bell, bless you. Got a chance to interact with your husband briefly at the uh, brunch on Saturday. Thank you for sending him along. I understand you were out of town, I think. Pamela Dobbins is there. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Kenethia. Jordan uh, is here with us. Blessings, blessings. Rosanna Diviner, thank you, ma'am, for being there. Blessings to you and your family. Give your daughter my best. Will McCraig is there. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Elaine Lewis, thank you for being there with us. And we appreciate your being in place. Let's get into the word of God and the subject for our discussion today. Again, we're going to finish this in 24 minutes to show you if you can bring your belief system up. And that's the job of ministry. That's the job of a pastor. It's the job of the, the church. That's the role and function in your life to uh, elevate the level of your believing so that if you can believe all things are possible. All right. To him that believe that that leaves nothing uh, out of the equation. God's Lowercase G-O-D-S, something in hand. Um, Psalm 82, verse 1, God stands in the divine assembly. Your King James Version says God stands in the congregation of the gods, of the other gods. Capital G-O-D, uppercase G-O-D, stands in the congregation representing the world with something he refers to, a people he refers to as lowercase G-O-D-S. Then he pronounces judgment among these people. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. In other words, God, uppercase G-O-D, God, Elohim, God Almighty, um, speaks to his sons and daughters. And there are no genders in God, so all are sons. This is not a gender reflective term. And he asks this question, when you understand your God classification, how long will you judge and judgment takes place in your soul? That means your belief system has to be renewed. And the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, there should be a manifestation of God's residency in your physical body. Your youth should be renewed as an eagle's. Um, they shall still bring forth fruit. I think that's Psalm 92, verse 14, in their old age, because there's no old age with God. Um, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth away, but the word of God shall stand forevermore. Glory to God forevermore. And then he says in verse 3, you is the implied subject to the reader. You defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. You uphold the rights of the afflicted and needy. We've been looking for uppercase G-O-D to do all of this. And he said, when you understand your God classification, that you're in my family now, you've been called out of the kingdom of darkness, ignorance, uh, 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 the, the lack of revelation knowledge, and you've been called into the kingdom of his God's dear son. So you and Jesus are on the same level. He's called, referred to through scripture as our elder brother. That means you're in the same family. Someone should type that in the comment section. I am in the family, the family of God. Verse four, um, he says, you rescue the weak and needy. You save them from the hand of the wicked. And then he gives us the indictment. Verse five, they do not know these lowercase g-o-d-s do not know or understand. And the consequence is they wander, W-A-N-D-E-R, in the darkness, the absence of light, the absence of revelation. And that's what the church exists. The reason for the church's existence and for your fivefold ministry gives that of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, Ephesians chapter four, beginning at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. That means you're born again and now it becomes your 
spiritual leader's responsibility to upgrade your thinking so that you now that you're being perfected, now that you're being taught, now that you're being brought into the will of God, you're understanding your inheritance. And then he says the second thing will, will happen, that they will um, 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 do the work of ministry. And then he says that the, uh, the, for the perfecting of the saints, for the for the work of ministry, for then the edifying of the body of Christ, that you be no longer children. And that's what we're seeing in the church is that you're a child when you're born into the kingdom of God, but you shouldn't remain that. That spiritual leader's responsibility is to grow you up in the things of God. Your life is supposed to change, starting with your belief system, your one's experiences, their uh, repetitious information. What are you hearing over and over? Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, hearing, I-N-G, over and over again. And then, of course, the significant others, the things that you are uh, having uh, in your life by way of other people. And um, then, of course, your um, environment, the environment has to change. And he goes on to say in verse five, they do not understand, they do not know. And then he says, I have said you are gods, lowercase g-o-d-s. This is uppercase g-o-d speaking to the his sons and daughters. This is the same word that if you don't like gods, then you are a son. Then that means you are a priest. Then that means you are, he is the high priest. You are a priest. You are the royal priesthood, um, 1 Peter 2.9. Um, then he says that he made us kings and priests. You are kings uh, in the kingship of God himself. You're lowercase k-i-n-g. You are lowercase l-o-r-d-s, but you have to know uh, what that status entails. And then he says, but like mortals, because we never come into the understanding, you'll die like men and you're like rulers, you'll fall. Let's go over. That's the old covenant. Let's come to the new covenant. Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my father are one. New Living Translation, the father and I are one. Then they proceed to stone him because they call that blasphemy. They don't have any understanding. These are spiritual leaders. He says, is it not written, verse 31, in your law? And I just read that to you from Psalm 82. I have said, you are gods. God called them gods. And if he, God, the heavenly father, called them gods, lowercase g-o-d-s, to whom the word of God came, that's Jesus himself. Jesus is the word of God, the word made flesh. And scripture cannot be broken or set aside. What about the one, Jesus referring to himself, whom the father set apart as his very own, and went in and sent into the world, excuse me. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said I am, here it is, God's son. So a God, uppercase G-O-D, is the same thing as a lowercase G-O-D because everything, the law of Genesis, everything produces after its own kind. If you're born again, that's referring to God's being your father. That's a, a production of sorts. So this is the word Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. And for God, he's the ultimate Elohim, right? He is the almighty God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, you start at verse 7, you'll pick that up along that way. But then he says, you are lowercase g-o-d-s. You are in the Elohim class. Seeds produce after their own kind. Every seed produces after its own kind. A tomato seed produces tomatoes. It, it's born again through the ground. Squash, produce, uh, squash seeds produce other squash born again through the ground. Um, sheep produce sheep, goats produce goats, cows produce cows. And then if you're born again, you are born into uh, first Peter chapter, chapter one, verse 23, you're born again, not of corruptible seed as you were the first time, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forevermore. The seed is the word of God. So this uh, is this is a mighty being. That's just referring to you. You're a mighty being, and you stand in a level above mortal humanity. This statement is based on God's intent that human beings are born again into the state in which they are equipped. That's the blessing to live above the natural realm, and this blessing means that you are unanswerable. What happens in your life is, does not have to be explained to the natural realm. It does not have to make sense and connect you to the natural realm. You're born from above. Everyone should type that in the comment section. I'm born from above. God has a complete and inexhaustible supply. We learned this. And then gods must understand and know 
all that has been done for us in eternity. So we know we have the blessing, which means you're anointed to win. Everyone should type that. You're empowered to overcome. You're impossible to be cursed. You're impossible to be cursed. And then, of course, um, there are some other pieces to this puzzle, but I'm going to advance myself here. I want to just show you what it means over in Galatians chapter 4, 19, verse, uh, the New Living Translation. The Apostle Paul says, oh, my dear children, I feel as though I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue. Listen to this until Christ be formed, fully developed in your lives. That means that you are born from above, and because you're in the God class, then Jesus has to be formed in your life, just as Jesus was born from above into the earth realm, and he represented the Father. And the Apostle Paul says, Christ is supposed to be formed in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, New Living Translation, and what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. So that means God lives in us. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their uppercase G-O-D and they will be my people. So what kind of people can you be if God lives in you and you're born of God? You're a child of God. That means you're in the God class. Genesis chapter 17, verse one. This is God speaking to Abram. It's all over the Bible. I just stopped here. I just started this part. It's, there's so much more. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, a, a human being, and said unto him, I am the almighty, uppercase G-O-D, walk before me and be thou perfect, be thou just like me. I'm perfect in the uppercase G-O-D class. Now that you're my son, born again of the old covenant, by his belief system. Remember, Abram believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. That's in the 15th chapter. And he says, now you be perfect. That word perfect means complete, complete of, of the same magnitude of the same class made of the same ilk as is God. Deuteronomy 18, 13, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You can't achieve this perfection without being in the same nature, in the same classification as is God. St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Jesus says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. This does not refer to sinless perfection. It just simply means uh, that God is perfect. And in that sense, you once you're born again, you are born of that same class. And so let's look at this. You shall not be empty. One of the words of one of the words that the Lord spoke to me years ago, he said, the most dangerous man in the world is a man or a human being with something in his head, and then he can have something in his heart, something in his head or heart, and then something in his hand. Because of what you hold in your heart, that is your belief system, that is in your imagination, that is means in your will, it will manifest something in your hand. It is impossible for a man or a woman. Please hear me. Are you all hearing me? It is impossible for a man or woman to have God, the manifestation of God in their heart, in their belief system, in their experiences, in their environment, in their uh, the significant people that God has placed in their life. And repetitiously, you're hearing the word of God over and over. You, you cannot have a possession of who God is in your heart and it not manifest something in your hand. The most dangerous person in the world is the person that has revelation in their heart because that revelation will always produce something in their hands. I want someone to type what, I, what it was I just said. When it's something in your heart, and that's the job of ministry, not to exercise you, that's the gym. Not to teach you to dance, that's the dance studio. We believe in all of that. Not to, no, to give you a reading of the will of God, like Hezekiah did. He had a word from God, and he has all these uh, enemies around him over in the book of Second Kings, and he spreads the letter out. What does he do? He reads the will so he can know his app apportionment. Um, the scripture says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, that the heir, H-A-E-I-R, as long as he is a child in his understanding, he differeth nothing in his natural circumstances from a slave or a servant, though, on the other hand, he is the Lord of all things. Let's just keep going and try to end this up. Um, Jesus uh, says this, he says in uh, Exodus chapter three, verse 20, he tells, he, t he's speaking to the God class. These people, the Israelite people are in bondage. They are 
in Egyptian bondage. Well, watch what God said. He repeats what he said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. Now he makes it real. Here it is 400 years later. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he, Pharaoh, referring to Pharaoh, will let you go. And I will give this people favor. Everyone should type it in the comment section if you want it. I have the favor of God on my life. F-A-V-O-R. The old King, old Elizabethan, Elizabethan English includes a U, F-A-V-O-U-R, but it's the same word. You have the favor of God, which brings you into the God class. That's why the natural realm cannot restrict you. You're in the God class with favor on your life. Glory to God forevermore. He says, I'll give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians because you're, in, you're, you're, you're being baptized into the Red Sea, which was a type of them being baptized into Christ. Uh, the book of Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, tells us about that. And he says, you shall come to pass when you go, you shall not go out empty. It is, it is illegal for you to be in the God class and supernatural manifestations are not manifesting in your life, not occurring in your life. You shall not go out empty. He couldn't have them in the God class and leave uh, this, what, enslavement, this slavery and go into uh, back into a, a system and he not provide for them. It is illegal. It is illegal for you to be in the God class and manifestations of provision are not happening in your life. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Then he shows he shows them how this is going to work. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels. Come on, not the cheapest uh, thing there is in the universe. Jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and you shall put them on your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. You shall not be empty-handed is what he's really communicating to them. In other words, your sons and daughters have to reverse in their belief system by them having tangible uh, tangible jewels of silver and gold and the best of the Egyptian apparel in their lives. Now it's reversing the way they've been seeing themselves because for generations they've been enslaved and they're the sons of God, but it doesn't look like it. The scripture says, we hold it, it shall, uh, we, uh, what uh, hath not appeared or what we shall be, but when we see him, we shall see him as he is. Watch this now. John, St. John chapter 21. I have about two minutes, two minutes to close this. St. John chapter 21, verse 5. This is after the resurrection of Jesus, which now it has to begun the new covenant. This is for you and me. Then Jesus said unto them, Peter said, I go back fishing. They didn't know that Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. This is now the third day. And Peter said, I'm going back fishing. The other disciples, I think, said, we're going also with you. And, and so Jesus calls to them and says, children, here it is. Have you any meat? That meat can be healing. It can be money. It can be your business scaling. It, it can be God providing in your life where there's no way, no logical reason. Do you have any meat? Which implies you should have. They answered him, no, that's the wrong answer. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fish. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. How much time do I have? One minute. St. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. Jesus has taught using Peter's boat, and he says, now that I'm finished teaching, uh, launch out into the, into the deep and let down every net you have. I'm going to give you supernatural manifestation. I'm going to retire you from this business realm, and I'm going to uh, allow you to be one of my disciples. And because you have a wife, because he had a mother-in-law, I'm going to provide for you. Now, when he had left speaking, he said, I'm going to sign a launch out into the deep. Let down your nets, every net you have for a draught, an expansive number of fish. And Simon answering said, him, Master, we've toiled all the night, human effort. Now, remember, uh, what is it? Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and human labor can at not increase it. We've toiled all night and have taken nothing, 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 nothing. This is the wrong answer for any believer. Nevertheless, because you're in the God class at thy word, I will let down one net, the most ragged net, 
that I because we've already washed out all our nets and we're fishers, you're the preacher, you don't know what you're doing. So he lets down one net and the scripture said, and when they had this done, God is waiting for us to do something based on the premise of understanding his word. They enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship and they that they should come and help them. This is the kind of increase that should be showing up in our lives as believers, millions and billions, because the time is short and we have to build the kingdom of God. And that's God's uh, working through us as his children, as the gods, lowercase g-o-d-s. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. So that means that because you're a believer, the evidence of that should be supernatural provision coming into your life and you're never empty handed. Father, we thank you for your word and give you praise in Jesus' name. Uh, that's 24 minutes, uh, well, maybe even 25 now. If you can upgrade your belief system to receive the entire kingdom that has been downloaded in your spirit the moment you are born again, you begin seeing evidence in your life. Blessings and peace to you and yours. Don't forget to join us tomorrow, 12 noon Central Standard Time. We will um, uh, see you from the stage and it's going to be a blessing. I have something for you. I believe it will bless your life. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any person is in Christ, that individual is a new creation. Old things about your life have passed away and behold, everything about your life is new, new, new. Blessings and peace until the next time.